Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer. I'm the owner of Auburn Yoga and Pilates and we're going to do some yoga tonight. So tonight we are going to do an all levels class. So I really hope that you'll join us. We'll get started. So you wanna find a comfortable seated position. Whatever that is for you, you may find that it's more comfortable to sit on a folded blanket or on a pillow than directly on the floor. Whatever allows you to be able to fully extend your spine, that's the goal. You want to basically ground down through your sitting bones and then lift up through the crown of your head. Relaxing those knees down to the floor. Relaxing those shoulders down away from the ears. Inhaling through your nose all, all the air you can fit. And then exhaling slowly out your mouth. And then again, inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. Exhaling slowly out your mouth. One more time, inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. And exhaling slowly out your mouth. Now try to keep the same depth of breath, but if possible, try to simply use a nostril breath. So in through the nose, out through the nose. Taking this opportunity to really be present in the moment with your breath. Notice how the depth, the speed, the fluidity of your breath really does have an impact on almost your entire body. On your physical body, on your central nervous system. Hopefully finding that this strong, deep, fluid breath is calming, yet energizing at the same time. And although it sounds like they're mutually exclusive, they're not. And then try to think of something that you'd like to manifest into your day today. Maybe it's more joy. Maybe it's more patience. Maybe it's more appreciation. Or acceptance. What is it that you'd like to manifest into your day today? Once you've settled on something, try to picture yourself in a situation where you've received what you asked for. See yourself joyful. See yourself feeling appreciated. More calm, more energetic, whatever you said that you needed to manifest, start to paint that picture. What does it look like? More importantly, what does it feel like? And then continue to add more detail to your picture. Are there any smells associated with where you are? A 
Are you outside? Are you inside? Is there a breeze? Do you hear birds? Do you hear water? Do you hear silence? Are you touching anything? What does that feel like? Are you smelling anything? Just really trying to add more and more depth to your scene so that it's not just visuals, that it's encompassing all of your senses, that it feels real. And then just sitting here for just about two minutes, really taking it in. And deepening your breath, bringing yourself back into the room. Switch the cross of those legs and circle that spine. So trying to wake up the energy centers through your back, all those chakras. From your root chakra all the way up to your crown chakra. Switch your direction when you feel ready. Pulling it back in the center and moving from side to side, lateral stretches. Waking up your side body. Try to exaggerate that lengthening from your hip all the way up to your wrist. Really creating length in that arm. Drawing that arm relatively close to your ear. And then holding it in the center and inhale, sweep those arms up. Trying to let your arms frame your ears, if that's possible. Sometimes existing shoulder issues or simply shoulder tightness will prevent that. So if the arms are slightly ahead of the ears, that's okay. If you can draw them right beside the ears, that's fabulous. Now from here, twist to the right. So 
So use those abdominal muscles, those back muscles to execute that twist. And then drop those hands down and that hand goes to the outside knee unless you prefer to bring it somewhere else. Ideally, the outside knee, you want to gently press against that outside knee and encourage yourself into a twist. In doing all this without losing the integrity of your spine, still keeping your spine as vertical as possible. it back to center. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Same thing. Let those arms frame your ears. Really long spine. Ground down through those sitting bones. Twist to the left. Use those obliques. Keep spiraling that rib cage. Keep twisting those shoulders. And then Exhaling those arms down and encouraging yourself a little bit more into your twist. Bring it back to the center and bring it into an all fours position. So if you have sensitive knees and you're on a hard surface, feel free to pad them. Wrist crease is parallel to the short end of the mat and spill that pelvis down to the floor. And then root down through those knuckles, through those fingertips, reverse the position of the spine. Now coming into spinal flexion, pulling your abdominals up to the spine, exaggerating the opening in the back body. And then move between cat and cow with your breath. hands back in and keeping your right knee in your right hand in contact with the floor extend that left leg and that left arm and come into a modified side plank pose so modified vashisthasana stacking ideally wrist over wrist reaching those arms really long now ground down through that foot and come up into a modified gate pose. Letting the left hand slide down the leg, letting the right arm reach up toward the ceiling. Come back down to that modified plank. Use those core muscles to help lift you back up. Coming through a few of these. Coming down, lifting up. Now 
Next time, holding it down, coming back to that all fours position. Let those wrists come slightly ahead of those shoulders. Curl your toes under, lift your knees and hips, press back. Downward facing dog. Soften your knees if you need to. In fact, let's walk the dog today. And basically, that's just pedaling those feet. So, exaggerating the lengthening on one side, allowing the softness in the knee on the other side. And then holding down dog, dropping those knees back to that all fours position. This time, keeping your left knee and your left hand in contact with the floor, reaching that right arm up and that right leg out. Coming into that modified side plank pose. So on your lower leg, you have a kickstand to help you maintain your balance, but other than that, you're fairly two-dimensional. Now coming up, and to that modified gait, back to that side plank variation. And again, try to float up using those muscles in the torso, and also using them on the way down, so you that don't just plop. Take those hands, bring them down, back to that all fours position. So again, your wrists come slightly ahead of your shoulders before you curl those toes under, lift those knees and hips and press back, down dog. Engage the tops of your thighs, those quadricep muscles, and use them to help push the femurs back as you're simultaneously lifting the hips up toward the ceiling. And then lift the balls of your feet and step or hop those feet forward to come into a forward fold. Inhale, heart forward, head forward. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweeping those arms up, reaching those arms up. Letting those arms come down by your side. Standing nice and tall in a mountain pose. So ground down through your feet. And lift up through the top of your head. And coming into some chair poses. So sinking back in a chair. Reaching those arms up or modify, you can simply reach them forward. So all you're doing is hinging at your hip, at your knee, and coming up. So it'll be a little more challenging to bring your arms up by your ears. Modified, you just bring them forward. Shorter levers make it a little easier. Next time, hold the bottom of that chair. Drop your right arm down. Lift your left arm up. Reach up nice and tall. So inhale, lengthen that arm. Exhale, drop those hips. And coming up. Trying the same thing on the other side. So. Sinking down. Now, drop that left hand. Reach that right arm up. 
Really stretching through that side body today. Sinking down through those hips. And then coming up. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Exhale, sweep those arms down. Heart forward, head forward. Fold forward. Take the right leg, step it back. Drop that back knee. Flatten that back foot. Inhale. Sweep those arms up as you sink down through the hips. Try to open up that hip flexor of the back leg. down to your heart center so that your thumbs are almost in front of your sternum. And then twist to the front. If you'd like, you can drop that elbow down to your knee and come into a twisted knee down lunge. Or, you can keep it here, entirely up to you. Coming out of the twist, inhale those arms up. And, exhale those arms down. Now, curling the back toe under, lengthening that leg, dropping that back foot so that the front heel draws a line straight back to the arch of the back foot. Get a fairly decent lunge in. You can go as low as 90 degrees at your front knee if you'd like. And then walking that left hand up your leg, coming into a side angle. Now, root down through your feet. Engage those core muscles. Come up. Bring those shoulders directly over those hips. Warrior two pose. Reverse warrior. Keep the lunge, but lift that front arm toward the ceiling. And then lengthening that front leg and trying to sway your rib cage to the front of the room, arms nice and long. You may need some sort of a prop for this one, or you may be fine without it. If you're using a prop, place it behind your left leg. Arms are out, reaching over, coming into triangle. So trying to keep your lower body long. That lower torso, you don't want it all squished like this. You want to lengthen it out. Try and keep as long of a spine as you can. Wrist over wrist. And both feet are grounded. From here, take that upper hand to your hip and sort of nudge that back leg in a little. That block goes about a foot in front of your toes. And then, coming up, taking that leg parallel to the floor, and if you can, Reaching that arm up for balanced half moon. Really activating both legs, pressing through both feet to help you keep your balance. And then floating the lifted leg down to come into a warrior one stance. So heel to heel alignment. That back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Spin your hips. 
face the short end of the mat, reach those arms up. Lengthen that leg and fold forward. You may want a block or blocks to help you out here. The tendency is for that left hip to come forward. Try pressing it back if possible. Again, to even out both sides of the waist. So that there is there's some as symmetrical as possible. And as you're here, lengthen your spine, fold over that leg. Staying here, I'm just going to spin around because of what we're doing next. I'll end up facing the opposite direction. From here, you're going to transition the weight into the front leg, come into a three-point balance. Try to get your hips as square to the floor as you can. So take the back toes and knees, knee, not knees of the back leg, point it toward the floor. Lengthen that spine. Now some people find it easier to be a little more upright. So this next one's tricky. From here, now modified stay here. Just stay in this three point balance. Or take the hand to the hip of the lower leg. Keep pressing through that back leg. Come into a revolved half moon pose. And dropping that arm down, dropping that leg down, taking those knees out a little bit wider than your hips. Now we did this one last week. If you have bad knees, modify, go back into a chair. If you're somewhere in the middle and you have a tight Achilles or anything like that, you may find that it's helpful to place your heels on a blanket and then come down into this deep squat position. So a variation on Malasana. Taking those hands to the floor and coming into a forward fold. Moving that folded towel or blanket over if you were using it. And then inhale, heart forward, head forward, fold forward. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Exhale those arms down, coming into that mountain pose, and then inhaling the arms up, and exhale, coming down, heart forward, head forward, fold forward, step that left leg back, drop that back knee, flatten that foot to the floor, inhale, coming up into that knee down lunge. Here we come, side two. Hands come down to that heart center. From here, twist toward that front leg. Remember, if you'd like, you can take that elbow to that outside knee. Or you can stay in more of a modified upright twist. Entirely up to you. Coming 
coming back to center, placing those hands down, and then curling the back toes under, flattening that back foot, coming into that heel to arch alignment. I feel like I should be on a lazy Susan today and just spin myself around <laughs> to face the camera. And taking that arm, walking it up the leg, really grounding down through those feet, getting as much of a lunge as you can in at that front leg. Feel free to go up to 90 degrees. Coming into that modified side angle. Engage the muscles in your core. Come up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Lengthening that leg. Squaring those ribs. Finding length in both sides of the waist. And coming in to triangle. Again, trying to lengthen that low body. comes down to the hip and kind of scoot that leg in, taking that prop about a foot in front of your toes and coming up, pressing through both feet and ideally stacking those wrists. And then float the lifted leg back to come into a warrior one. Squaring your hips to the short end of the mat. Reaching those arms up if you'd like. Exhale, sweep those arms down. And if you'd like, you can rest them on a prop. Maintaining that heel-to-heel -heel alignment. Make sure that you direct the sitting bones associated with the front leg back. Otherwise, you're going to have a short waist on one side. And then inhale long, exhale fold. Getting a stretch through the back body. So, depending on where you hold your tightness, will be where you end up feeling this the most. Some people say front hamstring. Some people will say back calf. Some people will say actual back of the torso. So, just learning a little bit more about yourself. And then staying here, I'm going to spin around one more time. From here, you're going to transition that weight into that front leg and come up into a three point balance. Try to get the toes of the back leg to point down toward the floor. Once you feel balanced, moving the, that hand, that left hand, toward the midline, putting your right hand on your hip, reaching that arm up, and coming down, taking that foot in, and 
going into one more of those deep squat positions. Now, you may find that because this is the second time around, that you may be able to go into it without the blanket at your heels. Or maybe you do. Sometimes it causes a discomfort through the shin, through the lower front of your leg, if those heels aren't elevated. So, of course, it's because that area is tight. And sometimes it's very manageable to stretch it. And sometimes a prop really allows you to get more benefit from the pose because you can relax more into it. You're not so tense and fighting it. And then bringing those hands down, lengthening those legs coming into a forward fold. And then inhale, heart center. Heart forward, head forward. Exhale, fold forward. And then coming down into an all fours position. And coming into a seated position. So if you'd still like to sit on that folded blanket, please do. Sitting up nice and tall, lifting up through the crown of your head. And bending your right leg. And keeping that left leg extended. And then keeping the length from that spine. Twist toward that bent leg. Placing the hand against the outside of the knee. Unless it's too much, then place it somewhere on the inside of one of the legs. And now release the hand that's resting on the knee, bringing it up and over into a little lateral stretch. Dropping it down, coming back to center. You may end up needing a prop. So from here, this is, they, they say that this is the deepest lateral stretch that we, we do in yoga. So don't feel like you have to fully execute the pose to get a benefit. And the modified version is simply just plant the hand down behind the long leg, reach the other arm up and over. There are different variations where you can grab hold of that foot and you can reach that hand toward those toes. As you can see, this is not my side. Sometimes I can do this on the other side and sometimes I can't. So we'll see how it goes. But this is where I'm benefiting from a lateral stretch. Ideally, this elbow would go down to the floor and you'd hook both the front and the back of the foot with your hands. Even on my really good day, my elbow doesn't go to the floor, but the block helps. Trying to resist the temptation to let that upper shoulder fall forward. And then, oh, coming up slowly, that's a deep one. And then switching sides. So sitting up nice and tall, twist toward that front leg.
and then take that back hand, reach it up and over. So if we had a theme tonight, I guess that it would be lateral stretches with some twists. And coming up, and again, maybe you find a block beneficial, maybe you just want to take that hand, reach it behind, coming over, or maybe coming into that lateral stretch. Again, trying to do this without letting that upper shoulder drop forward. And that's really the challenging part is you're thinking about spiraling your upper rib cage back, even though it's not going back, it's that action that prevents it from going forward. And then reaching up slowly, coming up the back. And then grabbing a block or a pillow. Something that you can use to prop up your hips. So we're going to go supine. And we're going to go into a supported bridge. So coming down, bringing your feet parallel to each other. And walking your heels in relatively close to your hips. They say that when you reach your fingers forward, you should be able to brush the back of your heels. I can't really always accomplish that, but as close as you can. And then you can go low, you can go medium, you can go high. Find a place that feels beneficial to you. So your thighs are parallel, your feet are parallel, and the back of your hips, really where you find that flat surface, is in contact with your block or whatever you're using. You've got a very slight back bend, you've got a slight chest opening if you externally rotate those hands and let those palms face upward. And you have a hip flexor release, which is nice. We did a lot of different moves with hip flexion today. So while this isn't an extreme stretch, it's a nice release. Really let gravity take over those hips, let them sink into the block. You get the benefits of a very partial inversion. Your hips are over your heart. So hopefully this pose is calming in addition to the other physical benefits that we just mentioned. And then rooting down through your feet, sliding that block out, and lengthening those legs. Taking your right knee into your chest, and if you can, lengthening that left leg. If you're tight in your hip flexor, your hamstring, your back, you may not be able to fully extend that leg. That's okay. Circle that leg from the hip. No specific movement, just little circles. And then the other leg. It 
sounds very silly, but they say there is something to doing these little movements. It's almost, I feel like, you know, it keeps that joint greased. Holding it here and then circling the foot at the ankle. And the other way. And then switch sides. So taking that other knee in, trying to create length in your opposite leg. Sometimes they call this wind releasing pose. It's supposed to be good for cramping and digestion. Circling that leg at the hip. And switch. And then circling that foot at your ankle. And switch. And taking that leg and bringing yourself into a place for final relaxation. So letting those palms face up to the ceiling unless there's a reason not to. You can lay flat or you can put props under your legs. Or you can place a blanket over your hips or your thighs to ground you. I know I keep saying it, but they even have those grounding blankets available now, those weighted blankets to help people feel more grounded. It's the same sort of feeling that hopefully you get here. In Shavasana. Allow your tension to leave your body and allow yourself to really melt into your mat. Sometimes we have this tendency to clench and we don't even realize it. So now that you're here being present in this moment, are you clenching your hands? Are you clenching your jaw? Letting go, exhaling anything that you don't need to hold on to, out. Let it float into the room and then just dissipate and travel off.
Feel free to stay here longer. Or bend those legs, plant those feet. Roll to your side. Come into a comfortable seated position. hands into your heart center. The light within me salutes, the light within you. Namaste. I hope that you enjoy the class. I am asking if you did to please comment and to please share. We would really, really, really um, greatly appreciate it if you would be willing to do that and hopefully you would be benefiting someone else if you share it with so thanks again, see you tomorrow.